and from uh, this distance here it looks really good um, if I'm really being picky I can see one streak line from the side right there so I have my ice cube maker here uh, just a standard plastic box I have it as wide as what I'm going to use so today I'm going to use a spawn brush I do have a few roller which is on order for my DIY experience when I need to do gloss um, my handiwork is not that skill so I always leave a brush mark behind so roller really helped me with gloss paint so hopefully that will help me with this powder mixture as well so here is my last batch um, they do dry out but I guess if there is enough water in there then they won't set solid this is actually the last batch of my mixture so there is glue inside so eventually when all the water is evaporated they will set and this is not exactly an airtight container at some point I do need to top up so this is a chance for me to show you how I do this titanium dioxide powder um, they sometimes come in food grade, sometimes come in bulk. I'm just using a bulk one at the moment. Now I'm not going to sieve it out or anything like that because I know this batch is actually quite a fine micronized powder. So I've got a cup here. I'm just going to fill it to the brim. So this is by volume, not by weight or anything like that. And it's not like cooking or baking so it doesn't have to be that precise. So here I have one cup of titanium dioxide powder. And next I'm going to use the glue. So this is, they call it school glue, but I think it's just soluble PVA. And here, so I'm going to give it a good mix because they do separate. And this one comes in a nice squeeze bottle. And I need one cup. Okay, nice and gloopy. Very satisfying to watch. But anyway, I, got, I don't have all night, so what I'll do is as neat as I can be. And now you need water. So one cup, two, and three cups. So three cups of water, one cup of titanium dioxide, and one cup of glue. If you do this in a watertight jar, you can actually shake it about. But since my ice maker box here is not watertight I couldn't do that so now you have a kind of a powder and water mixture it will take some time for the glue to be diluted with the powder mixing so you just have to take your time last batch I didn't use any fairy liquid but let's add a drop of detergent and then give it a good stir no oh, there's some lumps in there so now I'm going to move on to my wider brush. This is the actual brush that I used to use it to paint the tiles. And you can see it's really runny. And this is exactly how you want once you paint on your tiles. Because you all you need is like one, one or two brush stroke of titanium dioxide you want to coat the towels but without the street marks the the street mark can show up on the final product load some of this titanium solution on it and then just brush away I usually start in the middle and then go back up make sure all the way to the edge because you never know what you go to laser on the towels you might want to laser something which is all the way from the edge to edge and that's it if you put some color dye on it then you can see where you paint it so I can see the reflection of, of the light so I can see the towel is actually coated um, I am actually doing some experiment today with you guys um, this is one coat at the moment they do take some time to dry, it depends on your humidity and your temperature. So my studio here at the moment is 60% humidity. It probably take a few hours to dry. I usually leave it on top of my solar inverter where there's a constant heat and that time tends to um, dry it out a lot quicker. You can use like heater and dryer, but to be honest with you, I'm not doing a big production unit here. So I'll probably just leave it for now. I do have a few that I have prepared earlier. So obviously if the towel is wet, then you can't touch them or anything like that. But because this is PVA glue, 
uh, mixture. Once it's dry, the coating do tends to stay on the tiles quite nicely. So you can touch it and nothing is going to come off it. And um, got two tiles here. Now this is the part that I'm not sure if you guys can actually see from, uh, from the video. So this one here is a vertical uh, brush mark and this one has no brush mark. The reason is that my tiles is actually quite wavy on the, on the surface. It's not a completely flat mirror surface on the white tiles. Sometimes they have um, ridges on them. And this particular type of tile, the ridges are running on the vertical side of it. So if I do the brush stroke like I did just now, it will really show the, um, the stroke marks. So you can see some of them are showing here so it's some low marks some high marks there and this is the one which has two coatings so this one originally was vertical um, brush mark just like the the one that i show you and then after when it's dry i do a second one on this side okay so we're going to laser these two to show you what a two coats look like but I also got some which are already done, so you know, I can show you that as well. So let's talk about the main benefits of painting it instead of spraying it. I have been a big uh, fan of my DIY spray in the summer because it was actually a lot better than using the can spray where you have to clean it up afterwards. And it's cheap, it's really cheap because when you buy materials in bulk like that, it's a lot cheaper than using can spray. This um, paint on method is so much better because for once I don't need to have ventilation. As you can see, I was just painting it in my studio. At the end of the day, it just glue um, PVA and it can dry in room temperature as well. There's no smell to it. There's no harsh chemical like um, solvent. And the other big advantage is the spray products that DIY spray that I did so far uh, in my last few video they leave a fine layer of um, powder on the tiles and as soon as you touch it the powder comes straight off and if I now laser that part that will be a defect but with the paint on PVA glue method I would avoid touching it as much as I can because you can still scratch it if I use my nails on it it will scratch but if I touch it hardly anything will come off so it's a much easier to handle so now i don't really worry about the corner being touched or anything like that but if it is an important project or if it is a pay project you don't want to waste your time doing tiles and then find out there is defect on it and secondly it's a bit more consistent so yes there will still be brush mark i can show you one this one here you can see some vertical straight marks on it and this one here, a nice lady figure head, but you can see some um, streak sideway. And what I find is if you can't see the streak on the unlaced uh, tiles, then you will see it at the end result. But this is miles better. I mean, these are the fail uh, print, but they are miles better than the, the failed on the spray stuff. For example, this one here. I don't know if you can see it, but this completely cannot be used anymore because I actually know what happened because when you spray um, alcohol and a powder on the surface, if you saturate the surface without the alcohol drying out first, um, the powder tends to clumps together and then the liquid tends to run on the towels. But you won't be able to see a lot of them um, before you actually laser it. So you only find out after you laser them. And the other thing is like with the, with the brush, when it works, it really works well. Now I can have like 50 tiles on the table here. I just paint them one by one, let them dry overnight or a few hours and then come back to do it. And I can do it without having, so without having to do it outside in the freezing cold and not making this room smell like a alcohol factory. Okay, so let me briefly explain to you my workflow right here. So I got my laser packer 4 linking to my computer. And a lot of my sample picks, I got it from Laser Picks and is a website which holds both uh, free to use um, photo as well as some paid photos. 
you will find a lot of information um, on engraving on the Facebook. Today I'm going to use this a uh, tiger um, photos and this is made by Matthew. Matthew Ullman. I don't know him personally, but I use this website a lot. So whenever I download something, I try to give them credit as well. So I'll put the link in the video description for you guys. So I'm going to use this um, picture here. If you are into engraving, you have different machine. Um, there is actually a um, photo which is already prepared for uh, lasering. But because I'm using a, a laser packer 4, um, this is quite a restrictive unit. So it's not really for tinkering, or at least not yet, because the light burn compatibility, I haven't really worked out how to use it yet. And uh, to be fair, the software is not really where it needs to be. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this. By the way, you can support some of these artists here by going for the premium version where you pay for the usage of um, downloads. So now I have the image on my computer. It's a PNG format. So now I'm going to my laser packer um, design space. So I'm going to add the photos onto my program here. The function I'm going to use today is under effect and is filter, which is basically dot matrix. I'm not going to adjust the photo or anything like that. I'm not really a designer by trade, so I'm just going to go with whatever box standard there is. Now it doesn't matter which one I go first because I'm going to do back-to-back -back engraving just to see what's the difference between two coats of the paint on titanium dioxide. So my laser packer machine is already focused so I'm going to go to a pre... Uh, oh actually let me set the power first. So for me um, I have my test um, engraving palette here. I usually go with uh, the best details so for me, is uh, 1K at power 60 at depth of 45. So 1K, 450 nanometer uh, wavelength. Power is 60 and depth is 45. So now I've got a blue line right here to tell me where the engraving will go. And I want it to be bigger to cover more space. So all I need to do is just drag and drop, make sure the ratio is locked now 1k resolution on this is about 216 dot per inch or somewhere around that figure so that's uh, roughly where i wanted it to start on the top with a little of space i got some space at the bottom for engraving as well so now i am going to press next step Alexa, turn on extractor fan. So now what the computer is doing is sending the file onto the memory of the laser packer 4. So the computer will work out what needs to happen to engrave. As you can see, the laser dot kind of firing on and off, on and off while it's moving. And that's how you create the laser picture. So this is my uh, sample box. Everything that I have been doing with the laser packer 4. Yeah, so all the metal cart is on this side, different settings. And I've got scratch, color scratch card there. A bit of a timber or thin wood, a rock, pebble. And here, this is one thing. So, you know, fail prints, not fail prints, I do keep them all. Because this is a learning process. This is the art behind using um, a laser is not always like easy as press a button. There is a lot of uh, tinkering as well. Fail prints is a very good way to learn. Laser packer really need to, you know, get the finger out of the bottom and create some kind of material test, just like Lightburn. Lightburn actually have this kind of uh, material test built in in the last nine months or a year. At the moment, it's like I'm going blind. I'm sitting by the machine one by one trying to find out what happened to the 1K, what happened to the 2K. 2K does give me a lot more resolution. You can see the risk cases is really, really clear. But at the same time, it's overpowering in most of the setting. And it's not always uh, repeatable. So uh, 1K is at the moment my go-to um, laser setting. And the other thing is um, this laser uh, Packer 4 has two wavelengths. 
So 450 and uh, infrared 1062 or 65, 64. But for some reason for um, the higher wavelength laser, it always come up gray, not black. I mean, yes, this one does have a lot more details. You can see the shoulder. Please keep your eye on the shoulder. Yeah, so you can see on the shoulder, there is a lot more details um, compared to the 1K, but it's just too, too um, light in color. Okay, so that is 98% now and it's just over 40 minutes. And here is the engraving. I have to say this is one of the best ones so far that I have done. I think it's another 10 or so more lines and we are done. And from uh, this distance here, it looks really good. Um, if I'm really being picky, I can see one streak line from the side right there. But apart from that, yeah, there is no visible defect on this particular one. I did leave some space behind and at first I was going to engrave it with... Um, you know what, let's do it. Let's do it properly. Okay, so this is done. This is the first one. We haven't cleaned it up yet, so there is still titanium dioxide coating on it, but it's looking really good. Hopefully, um, after cleaning it, it will be the same. But now, I'm going to duplicate the same thing again. So here is the finished product. And this is not cleaned up yet, so this is still a bit of an off-white from the PVA. And here, you can see this one was the crisscross one. Just double check. Yep, crisscross pattern. So this is two layer of the titanium dioxide. Um, doing like brush stroke, brush stroke. So you can see the only defect I can see on this one here, I know it's tiny, but I can see it, is this line here, running all the way along. You won't even notice it, to be honest if you, unless you look really, really closely. But then this one here, um, this one here, I've done two coats, but both of them are going downwards vertically. And a, a lot more obvious here, I can see the line running down. But to be fair, they are both really, really good image compared to what I have done so far. And this is by no um, effort, as in I didn't do anything to the picture or anything like that. I just downloaded it, used a uh, laser packer uh, design space and let it do its own thing at 1K resolution. I'm going to go clean up and then uh, finalize my thoughts about this process. So this will be uh, the end of my video right here. So thank you very much for staying until the end of my video. And here is what my thought about the whole process so far. This is one of the best method that I have used so far for engraving tiles. The fact that outside is actually freezing, the ground is already frozen and there's no way I can go outside and spray alcohol uh, powder. Even if I can, there's no way I can spray uh, so even that there is no defect. I mean, as you can see here, two coats of the brush on, it gives really, really good image. Um, here you can still see some vertical marks. So definitely my next tile project, I'm going to do a vertical first and then I go to finish it off with a second layer across and then I use the same setting um, that I have used today, so it should be able to reproduce results consistently. In terms of the um, the product itself is really cheap, um, one batch of that I have done many many tiles. My next video probably will be just an improvement on what I can do with a sponge brush uh, compared with the roller which I have coming. Like I said before, the roller really do help to sort out my um, brush stroke problem with gloss paint. Um, so hopefully um, it will solve the problem of um, this particular method of titanium dioxide. I really need to thank um, Nicky Norton who invented titanium dioxide engraving on white towels. Um, you'll find him on the Facebook group. Um, he runs his own Facebook group and I'm still learning a lot every day from him and the uh, people who kind of um, design images and um, other lasers. 
I do look forward to testing one of those um, newer fiber laser. So I have done dial laser, I have done this one which is dial with an infrared laser, but I haven't really done a um, fiber laser yet, which should be able to do a lot more details than what I have done here so far. The laser packer for I cannot not mention about this company because I use the laser packer one, laser packer um, two, I skipped three, so this is laser packer four. Um, they are so easy to use, to be honest with you, compared to um, other lasers that you have to build yourself. This one out of the box, screw them all together, put the parts together and you can start engraving. This laser can do a lot more than this kind of a detail. This is the 1K resolution. Um, if you look really up close, you can still see the individual dot. In terms of uh, DPI, I think this is about 216 DPI. The next resolution is 2K. Um, for laser packer, for 2K is about 600 odd DPI, which the dot becomes so close that I can't get a clear image on um, titanium dioxide engraving. So it would be nice if there is a 1.5K, but the uh, laser packer design space uh, software is still not very adjustable. I will compare this with like uh, maybe like iOS or Apple. They don't really let you have a, lot, have a lot of control over the software to fine tune. But at the same time, if you are not really into uh, fine tuning, 1K is perfectly fine for uh, making engraving like this. So I really enjoy engraving and I really enjoy learning uh, new techniques and I really enjoy showcasing my products to you guys so you guys can um, save a bit of time for learning from my mistake. So thank you very much for watching. I can't wait to see you next time with more interesting gadget. Bye bye.